In this series of videos I'm attempting to design and build a CNC plasma cutting table and in the previous video I showed some of the parts that I've now made for this table and in this video we'll start trying to actually assemble them. Now as I explained in the previous video I have tried fitting some of these parts together but I haven't yet tried assembling the entire thing. So we might have some issues as we go along but um, we'll see what they are and deal with them as we encounter them. Now the main thing I was aiming for with this table is to make it um, properly functional. It will get a lot of use if it works and um, if you've ever used a plasma cutter and a plasma cutter table you'll know that they throw off a lot of debris and that gets everywhere and as much as possible I wanted to design this so that it wasn't uh, going to just clog up within the first few minutes of trying to use it. So to start the design once I'd done the z-axis um, that I showed in the previous video, I started considering how to arrange the drive system. So we've got two main drives, we've got the X and the Y drive. We'll look at the X drive first, and that's the ones that will uh, drive the, um, the carriage uh, in the X direction. It's the long axis of the machine. So I started by working out the lengths I needed, and I cut two lengths of 50 by 50 by 2 mil box section and these will form the main part of the structure and there will be two cross pieces that join these two together of course there are two of these one at each side um, but this um, it's not particularly complicated but there are certain features of it that uh, I wanted now the first thing was the rails the guide rails will go inside of this box section so it's a more complex way of doing it than it needed to be, but it will protect them from the blast and the debris from the plasma cutting. Um, but it got a bit complicated in terms of figuring out the arrangement. So the way this will work is the rails will slide into the end of the box section. And you'll see there's a series of holes along the bottom. And they line up with the holes in the rail. And then there's just uh, 20 M6 screws that will hold that in place. That will help straighten and stiffen this structure so it will become uh, quite strong. Uh, on the other side we've got this row of holes and that is to hold in place this. Now this is uh, part of a, um, a support structure so on a plasma cutting table we need um, pieces going across the table that we sit our material on while we're cutting it. Now this will bolt onto the side here using this series of holes and the idea with this let's put this down is this is bolted to the inside of the main rail and it provides two functions the first one is it's a support for the cross pieces and i was going to cut slots in this initially but i decided to leave it like this so i can arrange the cross pieces wherever i want and um, so if i've got a big part I'm cutting, I can space them out, got a small part, I can gather them all together. So it gives me quite a lot of flexibility. Now the other thing this will do, this was cut from a piece of 25 by 10 uh, stainless steel box section. I cut it asymmetrically, so we've got a short loop on one side, a longer loop on the other side, and the idea is that um, when the blast from the plasma cutter, and if you're not familiar with plasma cutters, they um, blow compressed air out at relatively high pressure so you get a lot of air coming out and it tends to carry all the debris uh, down and out sideways and then the idea of this is the air comes out comes up and the air will spill around the lip but the fairly heavy media and, and uh, blow off that's come from the cutting process will not be able to make that sharp turn it will hit the underside of this and drop back down this works quite well, I've actually incorporated it into my other simpler um, cut-off um, plasma machine that you've seen before. And that's where I got the idea to incorporate it here. So um, that's what that's for. It's held in place with nine M4 uh, bolts. So I've drilled and tapped the holes in the uh, main box section. So that's what those holes are for. The holes on the bottom, like I said, are to hold the rail, the main rail in place. Uh, we then have um, this slot, 
and this is to allow us to pass the bottom part of our main support bracket through so this will go into this slot and of course the blocks that run on the rail in theory if I got my measurements right should be just slightly above the bottom edge of the slot and that way um, once the whole thing's assembled the uh, blocks and hence the bracket will move along without fouling on the top or bottom of the slot. Now one thing if you're going to do something like this is when they make box section they make it from a flat piece of material. So they fold it around but they over fold it so um, before they weld the seam it's constantly trying to push um, the seam together because they folded the angles so they're slightly less than 90 degrees. And the problem with that is when you cut a slot like this um, it will tend to close up so if I didn't do anything and just cut this slot then probably in the middle it would be almost closed completely up it depends it varies a lot from uh, one piece of material to another so to get around this what I do is you could just cut it and then physically bend it back but it's quite difficult to do that and um, so what I do is I've got um, inductive heater it's one with a, a handheld unit with a coil on it I make a coil that's just um, big enough to fit the box section through and then I slowly run it down the box section and it's, I do it at a speed where the corners which get hotter first um, are just starting to glow as I move it along and it takes about five minutes to do a length like this and then I let it cool down and as long as you go at a steady speed it won't distort the box section but what it does is it relieves this kind of built up tension in the bends and when you cut it you get a nice even uh, cut. Now it did close, still close up about a quarter of a millimetre in the centre um, but I tried it uh, without heating first and it closed up completely it's a six millimetre slot so um, it made a huge difference by heating it up has discoloured the corner slightly but this is going to be painted anyway so it doesn't really matter uh, so the uh, other features of this are at the top end we have this mount for the motor so the motor just sits in here and I'm actually using the motor assembly screws to mount it simply so I don't have to extend the flange uh, on the uh, end of the box section and it will hold in place fairly well and I've also um, bored out the pulley to fit on the motor shaft. Uh, so that's what these uh, are for. Now, the two screws here, so I can get to those to tighten them. There are two holes on the back, and these are just to allow me to get a tool through to tighten the screws. And then if we go to the other end, we have a slot, and that's for the idler pulley, so we can adjust the belt tension. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll give the main rail, so this rail, a clean. I'll slide it into the box section and then I will use the 20 M6 bolts and bolt it in place. And we'll see if all the holes, I haven't actually tried doing this yet, so hopefully all the holes will line up. Um, if not, I'll uh, show you the result. But uh, I'll come back in a few seconds for you and um, have the rail bolted inside the uh, the main support. Okay, well fortunately all the holes lined up so I've got all 20 bolts fitted and uh, the rail is nicely secured inside the box section. The next thing I will do is screw the support onto the side of the box section. It's just nine uh, M4 screws so I'll get that screwed on and then we'll proceed from there. Okay, so all those bolts fitted. I actually knew those fitted because I have tried bolting this on before. So these are the, uh, the bolts that hold this in place and so the support is now firmly attached to the uh, main box section and that stiffens it up even further. Uh, so I haven't tried assembling this before so I've been trying to think of the way to go about this. I think what I'm going to do is, the way this works is there are two blocks on each side and um, so I've made sure when I machine these they're exactly the same height. Uh, I've put an extension onto one of them, so normally they're shorter, but I've put an extension block onto the side of one of them, 
so that I can fit this clamp to hold the end of the belt so the belt fits into here. Um, so we'll need it to attach to one of these and these are both bolted to the main bracket and um, the way I'm going to try and assemble this is to fit the belt onto the clamp first. So I've got a, a kind of a loop with um, the block in the middle and then I'll feed the belt down the box section and hopefully I can get the belt to go all the way down. I'll tip it onto its end and uh, gravity can uh, give me a bit of a helping hand. Push this through the end, slide it onto the rail and then if I can get that one on I can then just push the other one in and um, we can then fit the motor and the uh, tensioner so I'll try and get this assembled I've cut the belt to length already I measured the length I needed by measuring from the center point of the motor to the center of the slot with the idler I allowed for the diameter of the pulley and the idler and that's the length I've cut the belt to. In fact, it's about 10 millimeters longer than uh, in theory it should be. So I might need to move the idler quite a long way towards the end of the slot, but it should still be uh, within the range of adjustment. I can always shorten it slightly if I need to, but of course I can't make it longer if I cut it too short. So I'll get the belt attached to the uh, block, show you that, and then I'll try and get it uh, inserted into the box section. So I fitted the belt onto the block, done the clamp up and what I can now do is try and feed um, one end of this belt down through the uh, box section and uh, while I'm doing that I'll try and get the block to engage with the rail and we'll see how that goes and uh, I'll get back to you if all goes well. I now have the belt run down the box section. I've got the first block fitted onto the rail. Um, the first attempt didn't really work very well. I was trying to, um, I stood this on end and tried to feed the belt down. But what was happening was the belt was kind of expanding as it went down the tube and it was kind of grabbing onto the tube and it wouldn't go down. So what I ended up doing was just taking a small elastic band, putting it around the end, and then it just dropped straight down and that was uh, very easy and then just uh, slotted the block on uh, once it was all the way in. Can't really show you uh, the end if I try and stand it up of course the block will just slide down to the end. Um, but what I can do now is I've left the loop at either end for the uh, belt. I can now fit the motor into its mounting position, fit all the screws and at the same time loop the belt around the, um, the drive pulley. So I'll do that and um, the last thing then with the belt is to uh, fit the idler which goes on at the other end so I'll get that done and then uh, get back on camera. So I've got the belt fitted, I've got the motor engaged, you probably can't see this uh, in here it's a bit dark but um, the belt is around the motor pulley and at the other end, try and get this down to uh, the other end, sorry hit the camera there, um, Again, you probably can't see it, it's too dark. Um, but we have got the idler in here and the belt is tensioned. So if we now look through these holes, I don't know if I mentioned these holes before, but these are so that I can get the bolts in that bolt the bracket to the blocks. The other block will now just um, slot onto the uh, guide. I can push that all the way up. And then in theory, I should be able to bolt this bracket onto here assuming that the slot is in the right place. Now it looks quite promising because I can just see that the block is protruding about a millimetre, which is what it should be. It's three mil plate and I've allowed just over a millimetre top and bottom for clearance and if I've got the sums right this should now bolt together. So the way this fits in here is this goes in, sits on top of the block and then the slotted screws or slotted holes are for the screws to go through and bolt this through to these blocks. So these will sit like this once it's in place. And um, the slots allow me to adjust. So when I've done the final build and welded the cross um, pieces on, uh, I can adjust these for the perfect width. So this will go in like this, bolt to the blocks, 
and then the whole thing should move up and down. So I'll get these bolted in place, I'll put the other block in, put the screws in and uh, we'll see if it will actually move. It wasn't quite as difficult as I imagined it would be to get this assembled. Just drove the blocks up by manually turning the motor until the holes in the bracket aligned with our two access holes. Put all the bolts in, both blocks. I fitted the tensioner down at the end of the uh, box section. Belt's a little bit slack but um, I'll tighten that once it's been run up and down a few times. If it moves, now I have moved a little bit and it seemed okay. Now at the moment the gantry is not fitted so this will just flop about. It's uh, the gantry that holds this in the upright position. But if we just hold this up, this should now move along. There'll be some drag because um, of course the belt's now fitted and it's going to have to spin the motor. But Okay, and it is clearing the slot top and bottom by the amount that it should. So what I'll do now is the exact same thing with the um, other box section. Now the other box section it's almost identical but mirrored. The only difference is the, the uh, mounting holes for the rail and the access holes are slotted. That was just to give me a bit of uh, wiggle room if I needed to adjust the rails to get them to run true. I think uh, with hindsight that shouldn't be needed but um, like I said, if I, when I weld it up, if it moves or pulls out slightly, that will allow me to uh, make sure it's properly aligned. Like I said, one of the goals for this is to get it as stiff as possible in terms of its, um, I don't want slop and movement where they shouldn't be. And one of the uh, downsides in doing that is if it's not perfectly aligned, it will just lock up solid and won't move. So um, having the adjustment might um, pay dividends in the long run. Like I said, it shouldn't be necessary in theory, but um, it's there. But I'll get that assembled and we should end up with another one of these, but mirrored. And if it all fits together, it should do. I machined it in a, a very similar way. Um, so I'll get that put together and we'll have a look. And then we can start looking at the gantry. So that's the second one assembled. Apologies if the sun's getting you shining through the window. Um, but uh, this one went together uh, more easily than the first one. It's, uh, knowing how to put it together makes life a lot easier, of course. And uh, this one moves freely as well, so they are moving the way I'd hoped that they would. So in the next video, we'll put together the Y-axis gantry, attach that to the brackets on the X-axis, and then we can try running up the motors on a test jig. And if uh, that all goes well, I can then move on to the next phase of the design and make the cross pieces for this and then we can start trying to uh, hook it up properly and uh, put it through some tests so look out for the next video we'll get the next uh, phase of assembly done and uh, go from there